welcome to the Heartful Parent Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Keating. In this podcast, we talk about it all, our parenting, our partnering, and our professional lives, because they are all a part of us, and we were never meant to do this alone. Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Heartful Parent Podcast. I have a treat for you today. You know, we hear, wherever we live in the world, we hear about people parenting in other parts of the world. And I think oftentimes we wonder, what would that be like? What, you know, what is it like to live somewhere else and to parent somewhere else, perhaps in a different, completely different culture? Well, today I am so grateful to be able to introduce you to my colleague, Tamina Fahad, who actually is joining us from Pakistan. I know, all the way from Pakistan. She is a parent coach over there, and I was actually connected with her through my guest who was on a while back, Aparna Venkatraman, who, as you might recall, talked about sort of the power of, of our breath and using breath practices to kind of help ourselves and our children calm down. And so I was so pleased when this introduction was made because it allowed me to connect with somebody who's doing the work that I do, as I said, in a completely different part of the world. And I so enjoyed my conversation with Tamina, and I hope that you will today as well. I want to tell you a little bit more about her because in many ways we had sort of similar paths. So, you know, as you know, if you followed my work for any time, I was a lawyer. I mean, I still am a licensed attorney, but I don't actively practice. Well, Tamina has her MBA in finance, and she was teaching O-level students, so high-level students in Pakistan, but never felt like that area was giving her a lot of satisfaction. She also then worked as a student's behavior counselor and a teacher's training executive, which she loved doing and was very good at doing, but during COVID sort of started feeling worthless. And as you'll hear in this interview was also struggling on her own parenting journey. And it was during that time that she felt like she really got a calling and started her career as a parent coach. She now supports moms of young kids and specifically helps them overcome yelling and challenging behaviors that their kids are are throwing at them by guiding them through some easy steps so that they can feel really calm and connected. And in this interview today, you're going to hear about some of those techniques that Tamina teaches her clients and that really resonate with me and the work that I do. And I think they will resonate with you as well. So I hope that you enjoy this conversation with my colleague all the way from Pakistan. Without further ado, Tamina Fahad. Tamina, welcome to the Heartful Parent Podcast. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for having me here. It's a wonderful opportunity. So I want to jump right in and sort of address what many listeners might be wondering about, which is, you know, you're based in Pakistan, which is a long way from Seattle, where I am based. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, how you got into the, into parent coaching, and what is it like parenting in Pakistan, which I suspect is a lot more similar than different, but I would love to hear a little bit about what your life is like there. Yeah, uh, that's uh, that's a wonderful question. Actually, most people over here also in this part of the world, uh, we also think that parenting is not maybe different than uh, other countries. But uh, to be very honest, it's very same. I had uh, uh, multiple clients from different countries and also uh, some of my colleagues are from different countries like Canada and uh, America and all that. So uh, what I have come to know during all these past year is that parenting is same all around the world, uh, no matter where you live. I would say that almost a decade before, it was not that, you know, easy, not that um, positive sort of parenting over here as well in Pakistan. We were using same old conventional parenting styles. 
where there was a lot of punishments, a lot of disciplining, and uh, there was a lot of uh, you know shouting and threats. Everything. These were the common tools as a parent uh, almost 10, 12 years before. But recently, I am seeing a drastic change coming to the uh, to all the, the these parenting strategies. People are more aware of new techniques. People they do they do know that what is right uh, for their kids' mental and physical growth, and uh, what approaches to go for. So uh, many mothers they come to me asking about respectful parenting. Uh, some people call it gentle parenting. Some people call it positive parenting. I it's what I do actually. It's respectful parenting incorporated with emotional intelligence. So it is a combination of two things, and uh, it's uh, like it's how you know I'm supporting many mothers here in Pakistan as well. So now, now we know that what are different types of parenting styles and which one we can you know follow for better connection and better bonding with our kids. Okay, so Tamina, then you are really on the cusp or like in the in the middle of this, what it sounds almost like a parenting revolution, kind of where you are, because in just a decade, it started to shift from this really authoritarian, you know, Mm -hmm. punishment-based, threat-based style of parenting to this more positive, gentle, you know, communicative style of parenting. How did you discover that gentle style of parenting and arrive at the belief that that was the right fit for your children and your family? Uh, To be very honest, when, uh, as I, if I talk about myself, I was never, you know, very shouty or very aggressive type of a person. I was very calm uh, by nature, but when I had my own kids, it was complete 360 degree change. I was, I found myself shouting. I found myself, you know, uh, threatening and yelling and everything. Uh, but I, I was not liking it, actually. I was going through some really hard time and I didn't know what is happening with me. Then I, uh, after my daughter was born, it was, it was going worse. Uh, like, it used to be uh, the whole day goes like that and where I, where I am shouting only. Uh, my daughter was hardly one year old and I was shouting on her as well. So then I realized that there is something wrong and I should start working on that side of me. Then I realized that what is, what is happening, it was actually uh, the postpartum depression. It hit me hard. And because of that, I was all that shouty and snappy and, you know, uh, doing all sorts of negative stuff with my kids, with myself, with my husband. It was it was a mess. I still I, you know, I talk about that period as a dark phase of my life because it truly was. Yeah. And at that time, I was looking for help. I was looking for some therapies or some coaching. Coaching was not actually well known in Pakistan at that time. And uh, mostly there were psychologists available, psychiatrists were available, and uh, the therapists were also there. It was the time of COVID when it was on its peak. So the COVID depression was also there and the PPT was there. So it was, you know, double the depression, you can say. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) I I mean... I I relate to your story in so many ways because I also dealt with postpartum challenges after the birth of my older daughter, which, you know, is now 14 years ago. But I I also found myself just not, I wasn't very kind to my husband, to myself, to my daughter. Like I was just really, I describe it as rage and I had never experienced that before. So I I think, and I'm, my guess is that there are many parents listening who also mm. can relate to that story. And your daughter is now five, correct? Yeah. Yeah. She is now five. Yeah. So I just think it's such a brave thing to do to recognize that something's not right and that you're not feeling right and to look mm. for, for help. So as you said, 
parent coaching wasn't very well known at that time Mm. in Pakistan. Where did you get support and how did you start to shift things in your family? Uh, Actually, I was uh, a student behavior counselor uh, for almost eight years before I had my kids. So I had that counseling thing in me. And I was known as a very good counselor in the in the school where I was, you know, the student counselor. So uh, that thing was there in me, the counseling part. So I when I was looking for a therapist, I was looking for, <laughs> to be very honest, I was looking for someone who is as good as I am. So because I will, <laughs> I will not settle down for someone who's not, you know, as efficient. Uh-huh. So, so that was the thing, but I was not finding anyone. It's, and then the timings were so odd because when uh, the time that I was getting free, uh, none of the therapists and psychologists were available for my therapy. Right. So that was another, you know, challenge uh, that I was facing at that time. What I did actually, I started uh, Google searching and YouTube videos. I started watching all sorts of parenting videos and I uh, used to, you know, stay up all night to attend different parenting conferences, which were, you know, going on different and different parts of the world. So I attended many uh, webinars. I had done my research and everything. And then I, I know that, okay, this is, this is the part which was in me all the time, but it was hidden somewhere. Yeah. And then it was like some sort of a calling that I got from inside of me or something that I thought myself that I was this all that time. Why I am not this anymore? Why I am yeah. not like this anymore? Right. So then I started working on myself all by myself. I didn't get any professional help. I started doing yoga. I started working on my self-care walk and everything and that helped me a lot you know what is is so amazing again as I said I think a lot of people have no idea what it's what it's like to parent in other parts of the world and probably we know that you know mothers all the world over love their children but there's different cultural things at play and so people may assume that it's really different and what I love about what you just said is that those are all the same things that we talk about on this podcast, right? And that you talk about with your clients, I talk about with my clients, that we have to start with us. We have to take care of ourselves. We have to manage ourselves before we can really effectively manage and support our children. That's right. Yeah. So I know that in your work, you now help other mothers in particular who are dealing with postpartum mood disorders, postpartum Mm -hmm. depression, postpartum challenges. You mentioned just a few minutes ago that when you were looking for help, nobody that you needed help from was was available at the times that you needed. So how do you make yourself available to women in your community when they most need it? Yeah, actually, the thing is that here in uh, Pakistan, Mothers usually get free time after their children are asleep and the dinner is done and we have some me time. And that time is usually past 9 p.m. in the night, right? So what I started doing is I made sure that this is the time that I will be working. So my working hours are from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. where I'm taking sessions. And after 11 p.m. till sometimes 11.30, sometimes 12 in the night, I am like working uh, to, you know, uh, upload videos to do all the, you know, marketing, social media posts and everything X, Y, Z. So from 9 to 12 is actually my working hours in the night. Uh, So (laughs) this is complete crazy. Uh, just to accommodate all the mothers so that they don't feel left out the way I was feeling at the time when I needed the help, uh, that I needed help the most. And uh, so I am here for them so that whenever they are free, and sometimes, you know, it happens when my clients 
this is one thing that my clients they really appreciate me about that i am so flexible uh, with my timings and also uh, if they want to change their days because sometimes it happens a session is planned and uh, their kids are not in a mood to sleep <laughs> and they cannot you know come uh, they cannot take out time to start their session without the distraction part yeah so uh, they just sometimes they request me can we please postpone it take it to the next day can we do it like that or maybe 30 minutes later and i it's okay with me i said yeah okay this is what this was my first a uh, priority when i became parent coach this was the first thing in my list that i will be available at the most suited time for for the mothers I mean, this is just phenomenal. And so for people who are listening to this at the time that Tamina and I are recording this, it's now it's about 10 o'clock in the morning, my time, which means it's just about 11 p.m. It's 11. <laughs> in Pakistan, you know, that because of the time difference, that's that's sort of the way that it it fell. And and I was so concerned that that was so late. And you said, no, this is when you normally are working, mm-hmm. which I think is just a really beautiful sort of recognizing the situation that your clients are in, that those are their free hours and making yourself available so that they have the support that you didn't get mm-hmm. when you when yeah. you needed it. I know That's that right. one of the things that you talk about with your clients is because a lot of parents complain, my kids never listen to me, right? They are not listening. Um, that oh, yeah. I think that is a complaint of parents the world over, <laughs> that we would all love to say something to our children and have them listen right away. And that's just not the way children are programmed. So you have come up with an approach to help parents help their children listen better. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, sure. Actually, yes, this is one complaint that I also get a lot, not only uh, from my clients, but also from, you know, different posts on social media. People are always talking about it, Uh, how I make my child listen to me, what should I do and how my child is going to listen to me. So uh, this is one thing. Then I started, you know, digging into it. That what are the reasons why kids don't listen? The thing is that if they don't know how to listen, they will not, uh, you know, implement it. They will not do it. So first you have to tell them what is listening. First you have to tell them how they should be listening. And how you can do that, you can do it by showing it to them. Like everything, when a child is coming in the world, the child doesn't know anything, right? You are teaching him everything. So why not teach him how to listen, right? So what happens when when your children are coming to you and they are talking, what we are doing, we are busy in our mobiles and we are saying, "Mm, yeah, hmm, okay, okay, I understand. We are not paying attention. Sometimes we are in the kitchen so busy, And we are cooking and the child is standing right behind us talking and we are saying, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, I I heard you. Okay, fine. Let's, uh, we'll talk about it later, right? So this is what we are doing here as well. (laughs) This is what (laughs) most of of us do, right? So then I, then I, uh, this is one approach that I, uh, you know, uh, come up with is let's deal with your child and how you deal. Deal is actually an acronym where, which means uh, drop everything and listen. Love it. Which means child is coming to you. You can pause your life for two seconds and look at your child in her or his eyes and listen. Listen like you really mean it, right? So when your child is observing you, that you do it every time, then your child is going to, you know, model it. So this is basically modeling. So this one approach, it helps a lot. And it is so easy to do. Yes, the second question that I get after, whenever I, you know, introduce this approach to my client is that sometimes we are so busy, we cannot listen. Uh, We cannot stop doing our work and we cannot, you know, listen. So the the answer to this particular part is that if you are so busy that you cannot stop your work for one minute, at least you can pause it for two seconds. That's not that much, right? And you can tell your child, okay, sweetheart, I know you want to talk something really important. 
can you give me five minutes? Let me finish my work. I will come to you and I will listen to you. Right? Again, you gave your full attention to the to the child. So this is this is one very small thing, but which gives you immense results. I, uh, you know, I obviously many of us who work in the parenting space talk about modeling and the importance of of modeling for our children. But you have like boiled this down to this really clear piece, which I love the drop everything and listen, like I'm, I will remember that for, for, you know, a long time to come. And I'm guessing those who are listening will as well. And, and you're right to mean, it doesn't take sitting down for half an hour. It can take 10 seconds or, Hardly. you know, five minutes or however, I mean, And even just letting them know, I can't listen right now, but I see you, I hear you, and I'll be with you momentarily. Such a big shift. And then it helps them listen to us better. That's right. Yeah. When they see you listening to them, then the next time when you ask them to listen, they will definitely do the same. Right. And if we can start that when our children are young. I mean, I have, as, as I shared with you before we hit record, I have a teenager and, you know, sometimes she's off in her own little world doing her own thing. And fortunately she's pretty good about, because we, you know, we've cultivated that mutual respect that she's pretty good about listening when I, when Mm -hmm. I need her to, but that is something that's made so much easier if we can start it when they're young and start that modeling when they're little and you've got a five-year-old and a seven-year-old. Yeah. So I imagine you've been modeling this again and again and again for them. But And also uh, I, I cannot, you know, uh, tell you that even um, doing it only for one time and you will see the result. Maybe you have to model it for quite some time, but you will definitely see the result. Because if I talk about myself, I am doing it since last three years. And now I am definitely seeing the results. <laughs> yes. Well, and I think that's the hard thing for so many of us as parents, right? That we want to mm-hmm. try a technique and have it work like that, right? right. And, it, and it doesn't always happen that our children respond the first time or the second time or the 10th time. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. But, it, but you know, if if it feels... Like if we feel good about what we're doing and we're no and we know that we're taking that calm, measured modeling approach, eventually it pays off. Yes. It does. If we have a little bit of time, I will share one small uh, you know, um experience that happened today with me. I'd love to uh, hear it. Yes. Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, so what happened today in the uh, in the afternoon? I was talking to my mother on phone, and uh, my seven year old, my son, he was uh, uh, sitting there playing with her with her sister. So uh, what happened? Uh, he wanted to maybe talk to me about something. So he came and uh, he was uh, like coming and tapping on my hand, and I just uh, tapped on his hand again. Yeah, wait that way I'm talking on the call. It never happened before today that uh, he stopped and waited for a good time that my call is till my call ended. But today, once my uh, call ended, he came to me and he said, uh, Amma, you know what? Whenever you are on the call next time, what I will do, I will come and tap on your hand and you just tap back on my hand so that you sh- so that so that I should know that you have acknowledged me and then you will talk to me later I said yes that's wonderful idea and guess what this is what I've been telling him since ages but finally he said it out loud (laughs) and it was you won't believe I was on 11th cloud at that time I was feeling (laughs) over (laughs) the moon yeah then finally it's happening (laughs) Yes. I mean, that when we get those little moments of parenting where we finally see that the work that we've been putting in and the thing that we've been, I mean, you've been teaching this to your clients and now you see it paying off with your son. I mean, I can imagine that felt like a really, really (laughs) positive moment. You know, I know another thing that you talk about a lot with your clients 
is the importance of connecting with them through play. Can you talk a little bit about how you have used that and how you teach that to your clients? Yeah, I see uh, the first question that I ask uh, all of my clients is that how much time do you spend with your kids? And mostly the answer is that we spent almost uh, the whole day. We are with the with our children almost the whole day. Like some of them say, yeah, after my work is done, I am with my child uh, like almost half of the day. But the thing is that you are with your children. Are you playing with them? Are you interacting with them or are you there for them when they are needing you or you are just there doing your own work? If you're saying I am with my kid, what does it mean? Right. Is your child or yeah, is your child also feeling that same connection that yes, my mother is with me? So this is one question that we should, you know, just a little bit lens shift is required. But if you give only 10 minutes of your day to your child where you are playing uh, in any interactive game, any game that your child has picked up and you are just following the lead of your child, right? And you are just there without the distraction, without your phone in your hand, without your, uh, you know, a work thing going on, without your cooking and without your dishwashing or anything. So just 10 minutes of uninterrupted play, it builds amazing bonding with your child. And it is so important because that is a therapeutic, you know, that is so therapeutic that your child will start talking about the problems that he is having during the play. Children will, uh, you know, they will start showing the problems that they are having uh, with their emotions, with their uh, relationship with their peers and friends, uh, maybe with the teacher in the school or any other thing. But this is one thing where you can connect with your child on a very deep level. Well, and don't you think that if our children feel that we're taking the time to connect with them on that deep level and to let them sort of guide the play, that what we talked about first, which is the getting our children to listen, yeah. becomes so much easier because they feel like they're getting from us what they need. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So for when parents come to you, and I think this is something that we deal with in the U.S. as well. Many of us were raised in that very authoritarian punishment-based, threat-based style of parenting. And I heard you say at the beginning that even just a decade ago in Pakistan, that was the primary form of parenting, right? So perhaps the way that you were raised, you know, the way in some cases, like I had one parent that was certainly that a little bit more. So when you have parents who come to you and they say, you know, I'm struggling with my child, I I don't know how to connect. I don't know how to communicate. And, you know, my mom and my dad were, you know, threatened. They were harsh. They yelled a lot. I don't want to do that. Or I think I've heard I shouldn't do that. But I don't know how to make the change. Yeah. And like I said, I think we we see parents. I have clients that say this as well. I don't want to yell at my child, but I don't know how to stop. Yes. How do you guide them from what they learned as children, what was done Mm -hmm. for them to what they, you know, knowing that that's what they've been doing? How do you guide them towards a change? Actually, I have a complete course that is a six weeks course. So we go step by step from one week from where they are right now to where they want to be. Right. So we go step by step and in six, that goes almost seven weeks because I give one complimentary week in the end. That is a follow up week, a follow up call, you can say uh, so that over there till almost seven weeks. We go step by step and I guide them through each, you know, uh, challenge what they are facing in their life. Mostly one thing that always works. 
and which worked in my case as well because i talk about uh, talk from my own experience because as you said that yes i was also raised the same way my parents uh, in, especially my mother she was very uh, authoritarian and she was like you know all that yelling and shouting was there but my father was very very supportive and very uh, you know feminist even at that time <laughs> so yeah what what i tell them is that you first acknowledge if you are having any of your childhood trauma acknowledge and feel it then you sometimes you just have to sit with it and let it be right when you realize that what you are going through or what you were going through then only you can come out of it but if you are in complete negligence if you are in complete denial of the whole thing that no nothing had happened in my childhood then maybe you can never come out of it yeah so first you have to accept that you need healing then only you can get the healing done i think that is such an important point and it really loops back to what we were saying earlier that we have to manage ourselves first right, right? Yeah. before we can manage our children or change the way that we are interacting with our children I mean I I know that we could talk for so much longer it's fascinating mm-hmm. to I always find it really fascinating to connect with other people in the parenting space who you know may live in a in a very different culture but as you said like mm-hmm. at the core it's all the same we all love our children we're all trying to do the best that we can for them um and so I know I could talk to you so much longer but in the interest of time you know we'll we'll wrap it up but i would love to have you share a little bit about how parents could find you if they are interested in working with you on their own parenting piece sure uh i have a website uh, parentingupsanddowns.com so they can find me there and also uh i'm i'm also on instagram again parentingupsanddowns and also on facebook so you can easily find me just search parenting ups and downs and you will find me on uh, social media wonderful and we will also make sure that all of those links are in our show notes so that people can can track you down and follow you on social yeah, that's media wonderful. because i know you put some wonderful wonderful content out there so mm-hmm. tamina thank you so much for joining me on the podcast especially given the time difference. I know it's very late where you are and you're probably ready for bed, but I'm so grateful. (laughs) And I I just so appreciate connecting with moms and coaches from around the world. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. And it's such lovely talking to you. You are right that we can maybe we can talk for for hours and hours. We share so many things and, and, you know, uh, so so many things are in common with each in between us. Yeah. For sure, for sure. It's lovely talking to you. You as well. All right, podcast listeners, I hope that you got as much out of that conversation as I did. I really love Tamina's DEAL acronym, right? Drop everything and listen as a way of helping our children learn how to listen by being deeply connected. And, and I think you've all heard me talk about cultivating mutual respect with our kids and certainly Tamina's deal approach is right in alignment with that. And so, you know, I I just love that whether you're in the US or Canada or Australia or the UK or Pakistan, we are all trying to accomplish the same things with our children. You know, parenting the world over is the same in so many, many ways. You can find all the links and all the places to connect with Tamina in our show notes. All right, I have one final parting request for all of you. If you just have one or two minutes, if you could just take a little bit of time to drop that five-star review wherever it is you listen to podcasts. You know, most of our reviews come in through Apple Podcasts, so that's great. But if that's not where you're listening, that's okay too. Wherever you are connecting with this podcast is fantastic. You can drop that five-star review. It is so appreciated because that is how people learn about the podcast, right? The more five-star reviews, the higher rated the podcast, the more the podcast platforms push the podcast and the more parents we can get this fabulous content into the hands of so that they can hear from great guests like Tamina and all the other wonderful guests 
that agree to appear on the Heartful Parent Podcast, as well as those solo episodes that I'm putting out there. I would love to get this into the hands of more parents. So do me a solid. If you feel like I've done you a solid with the podcast, do me a solid and drop that five-star review wherever you can. Thanks so much. It is always appreciated. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you back next week.